Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Physics 30, Electricity and Magnetism, Electri Electricity Lesson 1, Introduction to Electricity. So today, we're going to explain electrical interactions in terms of law of conservation of charge. We're going to explain electrical interactions in terms of the repulsion and attraction of charges. And we're going to compare the methods of transforming charge <coughs> sorry, transferring charge, conduction, and induction. Now, moving on. Sorry, I shouldn't do that. Give me a moment to cut up. Conservation, attraction, conduction. Now, a little bit of brainstorming. What does electricity mean to you? Well, you know, my standard thought is, you know, knife in the electrical outlet, ow owie. Now, what is electricity? That's a very good question. You should learn science 10, it's a bunch of electrons moving. Now, what causes electricity? Well, that's much more interesting. You've, you've rubbed your feet on the carpet and given somebody a shock. You hopefully have not stuck the knife or the uh, fork in the outlet. You might have touched some unshielded equipment and given yourself a shock, but what causes electricity? Now, that's a very good question. We'll deal with that soon. Now. Now, you've probably conducted simple experiments with electricity at home or earlier science courses. Sorry, with electricity. Such as picking up bits of paper with a balloon. You probably know static electricity was at work when picking up these pieces of paper or fizzing up your hair. Those of you lucky enough to have hair. Now, interesting note. Combining, combing your hair can build up to around 1,000 volts of electricity, but virtually no current. All right? Now, in class, we're going to play with the balloons. Those of you that can't do that, Come on. All right, don't open up. I have this applet thingy here. Oh, come on. I right, don't open. Try this again. So, it's a nice interactive simulation. So, balloons and static electricity. As I said, we're going to be doing this in class. I just, if you're not available, if you're not in class and you haven't got a balloon at home, then hey, we can play with this. So, so reset the balloon. So, so let me see. What do we do here? We rub it. What do we get? Lots and lots of electrons. And it's attracted. And we get close to the wall, and it's attracted. Okay. Float. The wall stick the wall. So let's remove the wall. Add wall. Reset the balloon. Doesn't really work when we rub against the wall, but we rub against the fabric. And notice with fewer electrons, there's less force and less attraction. So we can talk about mass acceleration and all that sort of thing. Let's collect all this charges. There we go. We have to get pretty close to the wall mm. where it sticks because it's attracted to the sweater. So, we got here. And this ball, balloon, no charge, nothing. All right? So, if you guys get a chance to play with this, it's kind of fun, but I'm going to go on. Now, going back to here. We just played with balloons and static electricity. Now, talking about that a little bit. Myth busting. Static, static electricity is where electricity doesn't move anywhere. Now, that's a myth. Because electrons are always moving. We cannot calculate their exact speed of position. There's, but we can talk about the imbalance of charge. So, always moving. Now, myth busting. Static electricity is just the stuff that runs light, only weaker. Now, that's a myth. Static electricity causes lightning. So we're dealing up to 100 terawatts of power. 10 to the 9, up to 120 kiloamps. Literally fire you. So a charged balloon can have thousands of volts. Now, go back to uh, Science 10. Voltage and current. It's not, voltage tells you the energy of the electrons. Current tells you how many electrons you have. Anyway. Now, Benjamin Franklin, three of hearts. Writer, mathematician, inventor, politician, father of American independence, novel scientist, southernmost famous, 
most well-known in science for his kite experiment. Now, perhaps Franklin's most important contribution to science was developed in the notion of a separation of charge and electricity. Separation of charge. Now, this separation of positive and negative was similar to the designation north and south poles in magnet, magnetism. It's not a coincidence. Anyway, now, separation of charge. So he did the kite experiment, charge, magnetism. Okay, now, moving on, I've got a couple of other um, apps for you to try. Let's see if I can get a little bit, let me, oh, it did! Never mind. So this is a Leiden jar. Uh, now, I want you to read through this. These Leiden jars uh, represent a tremendous breakthrough in the history of electricity. The first capacitors able to store charge. Now, they were invented in the mid-1700s. Named after the place, blah. You guys read it. Now, here we go. So, we have here, bring this close. Okay, so we develop it, we bring in a charge, and observe the extra electrons held inside the tin foil. Now, we bring this discharge, oh, come on, come on. Why aren't you working? Uh, my apologies, ladies and gentlemen, because what happens, you bring this discharge wand close, Oh, sorry. You slide it close, and it arcs. Charge it up. See the electrons going in? Slide it close, and it arcs. It doesn't touch. Now, now when you get a moment, read through this. I agree, not the most wonderful uh, apps, but it gives you an idea of electric flowing, electricity flowing. Notice how this wand creates a completes a circuit. Right, now, I'm going to say here, going to fun. Now, the next one is the Van de Graaff generator. If you're in class, we're going to be playing with the Van de Graaff generator and electrocuting each other. Those of you that aren't here, well, here we go, and it's working. The Van de Graaff generator. Uh, now, you guys read through that, and I do want you to read through that because it's good hi history. It takes a minute to load up, so here we go. Here's the Van de Graaff generator. And it's moving electrons. Uh, now, why is this not working? Okay. Now, what happens here? Charge builds up, charge builds up, charge builds up, and it arcs or jumps. Okay, so turn off. Turn on. Okay, now. And it jumps. So, play with this for a minute. Now, this one here, you can't actually move the, the discharge rod. If you're playing with it in class, you see you can, and you'll get the different charges, and it'll jump different distances. But as I said, if you're not here, this will have to do. Right? So play with that. Look at it, and then come back, and we will talk about... Oh, no, there's one more I want to talk about. It's all electricity moving. Now, one more. Oh, yes. John Travoltage. So. And, of course, if this doesn't work on your computer... Ah, uh, Atlas, I don't know. They're upgrading all of them. They should work on Google Chrome, but if it's not, and you're on a Chromebook, open it with a different, uh, like, Internet Explorer or Firefox or something. Anyway, here's John Travoltage, fellow standing on the carpets. And away. Noticeable arc. Okay, too too much distance, so we closer. Now let's bring it closer and see. You need much less charge to create an electric shock to jump the distance. There we go. I agree. Not the most fun, but you can. Have fun shocking John Travolta. Anyway, I'm going to stop here. I want you guys, since you're at home and not in class, play with these. We'll come back and talk about it later, okay? Any questions, shoot me an email. Otherwise, good luck.